So for this first project, I'm going to use three coin envelopes. Now you can get them from everywhere, like lots of like station stationery shops and that. And they come like these ones are plain and not very good quality. Even though they're more expensive than these ones, these ones have like they're for school dinner monies like the parents sending in the money so it's got name class and amount you know but these are a much more sturdy one than this one that i got from wh smiths which here in the uk is quite an expensive stationery shop um and they weren't made very well all of the pockets in the whole pack of about an hundred was um, attached glued down wonky so when i work with these i always have to correct that with like the way i cover it so that it looks straight when it's on the page but these ones that was a lot cheaper as well the difference is they're made of a much thicker paper which i think is better when you're doing stuff like what we're doing because you make them all linked up and things like that which can weaken the seams so I prefer these ones but yeah I bought them other ones more expensive ones because they was plain and I thought oh they're quite cool I'll buy them and paid a little bit extra and I'm so disappointed because the whole batch had been glued together wrong and yeah they're no good I suppose if you are just sending in dinner money to the school it don't matter what your coin envelope's like but we ain't are we and i just don't think they should sell stuff that's not made properly for the price that they sell it at when yeah they're all wonky and everything and annoying <laughs> even though they're not making them for us but yeah they should be but anyway how are you all i hope everyone is well and that this corona fatigue isn't getting to everyone too much of staying indoors and just yeah doing the same old thing day in day out but yeah that's why i'm trying to think of different things that will just sort of break up the day and yeah just something different to put in a journal and so yeah i came up with three different ideas with envelopes now you notice i haven't gone around the top on that one because i didn't need to for two of them because i'm going to chop that bit off the back one which will be this one i'm going to cover that bit but i do still want that but i don't want it on the front two so i'm just going to slice them off And then ink that slice. And then, yeah, this one is really simple. But I think it looks pretty cool on the page. So I have done this before, not on camera. Um, in one of my own journals. And uh, as I was going through to find a page where there was room enough to write i saw this and i thought oh, why not have done that on camera that's quite a cute little idea right so we're only going to see that part of the back one and this part of the front one so you get the one that's more linked up around the edges what I've done, I took one of the pages from my lily kit and I shrunk it down to be about the size of a 4x6 photograph and then I sliced it in half to get this bit that's like a little plate with a name space or like a labelling space and I thought that fits perfectly on there like once I'd cut off the other half and um, yeah I did that to use the other half but then yeah I see this and thought right that's got to be done I'm just reaching down to get my glues and I'll just use a bit of glue stick and I'm going to put that bit back on there because I might want to use some of these book pages not in this project but 
in the next couple so yeah this might end up being two parts like a little series it don't need three parts because this first well unless decorating the other two takes a lot longer so it might need three parts but this first project is so simple and pretty quick to do because we're mainly just decorating this front one and I've stuck that on wrong for a start let's see where we need to be um, getting it right okay so we've got that there and then I want something here so I came across this page and I think this little flower there if I can tear that out and yeah rearrange it a little bit just I'll tear it first with this and then if other bits have got to be I shouldn't have gone that far because I can use these somewhere else I still can but um yeah I shouldn't have gone that far across but we'll see how it all goes I've got a rare little bit of quiet time my daughter has walked back to hers to get more bits and bobs for the kids like she is literally walking distance from my house and we're self-isolating together but um yeah she needs a few bits that are at her house and not here so i've got a rare bit of quiet time so i thought get that camera on love <laughs> and get filming make the most of the, the um time before the ass becomes a mad ass again not that i'm complaining i like it like that right yeah i kind of like that and i'm going to put something else behind there but we'll link this up first and see how it is so yeah one of these is going to be like a normal trifold envelope but we'll decorate it and like i said i want it stuck down so i don't want to do anything on the um, back side of of it but the front i want to zhuzh all up and make all lovely i think i want to put a little bit of fabric or cheesecloth or something behind there and i might tear again to have it long and narrow tearing off that little bud there yeah i prefer that for this okay but yeah i'm thinking hmm, maybe a bit of fabric behind there hello my lovelies welcome back to my channel if you're new here a big warm welcome to you i'm so pleased you've come and joined me little cockney craft fam so i called this video take three envelopes because we often work with three envelopes don't we like doing trifold things normally well i'd say normally for me is doing a normal trifold thing that way right so i did one of those um for the last journal or a couple of journals back in a shabby chic style which is the kind of style i'm working with at the moment but um it was proper frills and flats everywhere it was really quite thick so even though there was a pocket big enough for it to go in the journal i thought it made it much too bulky so i ended up making a pocket for the lid of the box that the journal was also going in and it went in there but this time i want it stuck on the page so the back of the top envelope would be left clear but i'm not just going to do that we're going to see um we're going to work with our three different lots of free envelopes to come up with three different ways of how we could use them so i'm going to start with the most simple of the three 
and we'll go from there. I've got a little bit of light neck curtain that's been lightly coffee dyed or tea dyed, I don't know. It's been something dyed at some stage, but yeah, I'm just looking what's the right way out. And right. Let's see. Probably need to trim a bit more off. I'm just, yeah. Oh, let's get it flat. And off of the side as well. Right, yeah, that seems a bit better. I could do the bottom coming off of that though now. And just put it in that bit. Yeah, I like that better. I wonder if I can, right, just want to trim a tiny little bit more off. Because I want to sort of pull it about a bit. And it will stretch it. Right. Um, I don't want that bit of frayed up cotton. Oh, come on. Oh, no, it's, uh, it's attached there and over here. Um, just trying to rough it up a bit, tear it a little bit. Right, yeah, I prefer that. So be up that way. Behind that, yeah, I do like that. Right. I'm gonna glue it onto the fabric first, like that, and then glue it to our little page. If the glue wants to come out, and just get something in there. Right. And so, yeah, I've just been trying to keep busy where I can. Missing the kids dreadfully, like the other three grandkids and my eldest daughter lover we've never gone this long in all her <laughs> all her life of not seeing each other this long so yeah that's hard but we've got technology so we've got facetime and things like that and we send each other little images of things and she sends me pics of what the kids are making with the stuff i'm sending over because I've been sending over little bits of art supplies for them to do little projects with. So I'm thinking we need something behind that again. So, seems to have used a bit of age of holding there. I'm thinking maybe um, something like this. This writing I love, but the images on that side are pretty good. Well, I've not got much butterfly there, so I'll use that off. Right, I'm going to tear it over here so that I don't lose that. I can lose that somewhere else. Not that this ain't nice, but um, yeah, I'm thinking it'll be ideal for being behind this image. So, let's see how big I need it. Make our tear about there. And I find it tears better if I've got a small edge to hold the ruler firm on the little piece and move the big piece. Otherwise, yeah, it just tears better that way. Right, and in that gap there. Lose that. Right. Um 
What's that going to look like? Oh yeah, see that's much better. You might well just get this inked around. Oh. Yeah, I um, popped out for a bit of shopping and um, one of our stores that over here that does like home stuff like home decor stuff but also has a really good craft section is called the range and they technically would have had to have shut because they do have a little bit of food near the tills but it's like packets of noodles or crisps or chocolate um the odd tin maybe or sauce um that kind of thing but um so they would have had to have shut but they've got round it by bringing in fridges um so that they can sell milk and cheese and butter which are more classed like essentials so that they can stay open so i went over there to do my shop because I when we moved I only the only wallpaper that came with me was bits that was in my scraps the rolls or bits of rolls that I had to use in different projects the kids was like oh mum we can't take everything like you can get them again so they went in the recycling and so I didn't really have any. I like them to make big file folders with lots of nice wallpaper. And so, yeah, when I went in there, I could get a few art supplies. Not that I needed loads or that I took ages because I thought, oh, people have to wait, like you have to queue to get in. But I grabbed some scraps of wallpaper, like samples, and I also grabbed some flowers and that because I was you might remember i said the other day i was really low on flowers so yeah i grabbed some little packs while i was in there which was cool and yeah it's handy to know that they're open because if i need anything i can pop over there again right so i really like that i'm going to put a bit of trim that's coming out at the sides so i don't want it big because these are only small oh and also this back bit, I need to cover that first before we start messing about the trims. So, I've got a little scrap from my kit that I trimmed down, like scaled down to use something for. And I have this, and it's made from the same papers, so you can see it. Um, it will look really nice behind there. So what I'm going to do is lose that and just glue it. Right, I need to get rid of that white bit. Let's trim a straight line. And then I don't I wanna lose I don't want to lose the nice coffee dyeing that's down the edges. Ah right. So Let's get a straight line now. Okay. And I'm just going to stick that on there. And then once it's in place, I can cut it off and ink around it. I'll just ink that side because it's going to be there. Okay. A little bit more ink going along there. Right. And get some glue on this little flap. Because it's the only one we need. And I just thought that the same paper will look quite nice. So that's stuck on nicely. And just use that as my guide to trim. So Yeah, no. and I'm just gently going around those corners and yep that's cool and nice and it's 
shop. Right. And then now you see that looks a lot nicer. But I need to get some trim for the sides and we'll do that for probably all three of them. So I'll just grab some. Right, I've got this one because I've got enough of this to do it on all three. But we only want it peeking out like that. So this I've bought, it was white and I just, um, I think I tea dyed this bit. So yeah, it, um, a lot of the times I do just buy white and then I can have it any colour I want. Well, with things like that, obviously when it's like more decorated or if it's something with different colours, like you've got two or three colours in it, little bits of trim like that. But yeah, when it's just, I don't know why I did both sides at the same time, now I've got to work quicker. Yeah, when it's just plain or one colour, right. I you tend to stick to buying it in white. Let's cut that off. Oh, I'll probably have a bit more glue there because this will have started to dry. Oh! coming out the bottom just on one of them right so that's that one done and middle one do the same thing on all three of them now And yeah, it's just a little tiny bit. It's not going to add a lot of bulk. And yeah, I think it's going to look nice and cute. So there we go. One more. Oh. Okay, so that's the second one. Does that look the same? Maybe in a little bit further that time. Too far. Right. I think I need a little bit more glue at the very end of that side. Yep, I do. Just a tiny bit. We don't want it moving once we put them all together. And our last one. Oh. Let's see, right, 
just making sure it's coming out at the same place. Right, that one's that one a bit wonky at the end. Right, let's get it back in. Oh, the glue has decided to go mad on its own. Oh, where's the lid? There we go. Oh, sorry if I went slightly off camera. I was just trying to get the trim in place. I've come out further, haven't I? No. Push that in. Mm. No. Oh, that's better. Right. Although now I'm thinking it's a little bit further. Just need to trim in. And yeah, that's probably the longest bit. Just getting our bits of trim in place. I've got a little bit of that left for something else. Right now. So it just adds a little bit. Right, let's set that the wrong way. I want something down the bottom, maybe coming out from behind, because, yeah, they're all going to be together. Now, I'm going to stick it coming from the bottom of this one, and I think I'm going to go over the top, maybe. No, I am going to come from behind again. Going all the way across. And we only need to do it to the one. Right. I'll just get that in place before I trim anything. Isn't that lovely? And right. I don't need all that much, but I'm going to come in out like that, a little bit either side. Right, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I really like that. Okay. So, that's our back one. Our middle one, we've not really done nothing to. And that's our front one. And we need to make sure our lace, that's the one I kept pulling off and putting back down. We need to make it stuck down because the other envelopes won't be holding it together for it. Because all I'm going to do now is, with your strongest glue, don't just use your thin paper glue, like a glue stick or that. Because it's going to be able to, it's going to need to be able to hold, stand the test of time, you know be used over and over and opened and shut a lot. So what we're going to do is we're just going to glue a nice thick strip down the middle and then put on our middle envelope. Okay, so that's in place. And then the same again, a nice big strip of our strong glue And probably better to go from the top, seeing as the bottom is all got lots more stuff going on. Right. Oh, the door. It was Amazon with me new glue. Because this is starting to get a bit low. Right, so we've got them all in place. And so that'll be stuck on the page, the whole lot. And it opens like that. So you've got three nice pockets and you could even glue around the edge and have it as a pocket behind. Let me just grab a couple of things that fit. So let's see. I sorted out beforehand a couple of things that would fit. 
in here. So we've got the bits and bobs we made the other day. And some tags. Oh. We'll put a couple in there. And um, one of them into that one. This journaling card might fit. I didn't try this, but it looks like it will. Yeah. So yeah, once that's stuck on the page, and I could fit more in, each one has got two tags or a tag and a journaling card, and there is more room. So yeah, we've got a concertina pocket that when it's on the page it doesn't bulk it out at all and so yeah that was our first way without taking the free envelopes so have i got anything to do in there yes i have oh i can't get anything in right okay i've got everything out now just in case i want to sort of decide these aren't the tags that are going in there or they are you know and i'm just checking yeah everything is cool and yeah i think that that looks really cool once it's on the page so that was our first thing we'll start on the second one we won't finish the second one but we'll start it right we'll start project two but like i said we're probably not going to finish it so this time i've got these wage packet envelopes and i really like them but I was going to do them like that, and then I thought, no, I want to do them like this. So I'm going to lock the top off of two of them, because we're not going to need it. And on the third one, I want to extend the flap, because that ain't good enough for me. So I'm going to extend it, so that we've got a much nicer, longer flap to work with. And yeah, they're going to be our tops. I'll sort out that bit of fine a little bit just by um, scissors along there. Right, so because we're coming out sideways, we're going to need a little spine there and a little spine there so the one that folds in first will make smaller we'll make this one slightly bigger because it's gonna it's got two envelopes to go around and remember they're gonna be filled with ephemera of some kind or another so yeah we need that side to be a little bit bigger than this side so let's grab my scoreboard right so i've got my scoreboard out i've got an old bit of tim holtz bit of scrap um right let's think i just turned it up the other way so i could see my inches here so i'm gonna want two bits i think uh i'll cut about yeah two inches each it doesn't really matter on the width really as long as you've got enough that it'll adhere it down and not not be too weak so what matters is our little our little spine we're making so I think I'll turn it, oh no, I was going to say I'll turn it over to a planer side, but they've both got quite a lot going on. So, remembering in the middle is an inch, but it don't have to be smack bang in the middle. Right, I'm thinking one side, we just literally need, what, an eighth of an inch is that? And the other one. I'm going to go, hang on, right, so I've done it there, one, two, right, so on that one I've done one notch, and on that one I've done two, so that might be an eighth, that might be a sixteenth, I'm not sure how far apart these little notches are, but yeah, I've just done one slightly bigger than the other, <laughs> we'll leave it at that, you know, because yeah, my measuring, 
and it plate. Right, okay. So I'm just gonna make a better crease for our little tiny spine. And it might not even have to be this big really. This art project on this second lot of free envelopes. I ain't done this before, this is just in my brain. Um, so I thought, oh yeah, we'll try to do that, see how that comes out. So, yeah, it's, it's not something that I can say, oh yeah, I've done this loads of times, and this is how it comes out, or this is what you need. We're learning together on this one, loves. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that might look a bit too wide. Yeah, I'm thinking that's going to be much too big. This one is probably all right for the second one. And the first one, I might not need a little spine at all. So, let's grab the bit of paper back that I've just dropped down. And just score. We'll just score it. And... Let's hold it down better and score it again because that did not look straight. Or maybe it was just the pattern on paper that was kidding me. Uh, okay, so that's too wide, I think. I've just done a little bit like that with no little spine, just a fold for one side. So that will go like that. And then this side, we have got the little sixteenth, maybe, of an inch or whatnot. We've got that little bit. That might be an eighth. I don't know. And that's for that side. Right, so let's see how long. They might need a little bit coming off of them. Yeah, they do. Oh, dear. I've woke up this morning in so much pain I am um, yeah I don't know it, it is really bad I had trouble getting out of bed and getting down the stairs I'm alright when I'm sitting down but when I try and move about I'm really hobbling it feels like a track now um, but yeah sometimes with fibromyalgia you do wake up like that you know right that seems better much better fit uh, but I am just going to mite these edges because the um, we're going to cover our envelopes so a lot of this will be hidden and on this one oh just up to that little spine okay And yeah, that will be our one coming out like that, or like that, yeah. So, let's just glue these together. Oh, and I'll ink around them first, so that it's all done. And I ain't got to go along these edges, just the tops, the bottoms, and the creases. that we may still see that won't be covered up and the tops and the bottoms will mainly be covered up it's just that centre bit really the the flap with the mitered corner won't be seen it will be covered up but yeah just to make sure that it all looks nice we'll just get that done Right, so they're both done inside and out now. Oh no, the inside ain't done on this one. <laughs> ha ha! <laughs> oh, I thought it was. It won't take a minute. And then we'll get them stuck down. I think we'll start covering them. But then we might leave it till part two to finish them off because I don't want this running into hours and nor do you because you've everyone's got stuff to do right 
Right, so while I had the ink out, well, sorry, that's there. <laughs> while I was inking, I thought I'd ink around all of these front and back as well, so that we are ready to stick these together. So, this one is going to go there, like that. And yeah, the other one's the one with the small, like, sort of gusset, spine, whatever. Whatever it is. Do you know what, though? I'm just going to trim that point there and there. I don't know why. <laughs> but I am. Just so it's not peeking out or whatnot. Like, a little, so it's a little bit shorter. Right. So, right, like that. Oh. and yeah I want to make a new flap for this centre one because one it's flimsy and two I don't think it's deep enough for the look that I'm going for and that one And so, yeah, I, um, oh, that's what I wanted to mention. Yeah, the journal I'm working on, I showed you the other day, I had my, um, covers ready, right? And I've done something different. I'm just reaching down. I can't, I don't know if I've got any out. Um, right. I've done something different. Before, when I've done boho journals and things, or where I've done journals that are sewn with fabric and maybe something like a little thin bit of cardboard just for the shape, and I've been sewing, I've found this a really sort of nice little bit that can make your journal feel a bit more like... Um, what's it like it's got a little bit of padding behind the cover right you see it's very very thin but there's that sponginess when you're doing gluing without sewing do not use this it makes everything unstickable you stick it you hold it in place with your little bulldog clips and that you come back later because of the way that this is it can just peel off so that was rubbish i didn't like that at all so i've gone back but the weird thing was, although it weren't, the fabric weren't adhering to it or anything like that, and it didn't adhere to both um, covers, but the fabric that I was working with had adhered a bit, you know, that had come over this, and there they did, and when I was trying to undo it, it was ruining the covers. But, yeah, this, everywhere there was this, nothing was stuck. But as things had flapped over and I'd stuck them down, then there was this in the middle, all loose, and the fabric lifting from the um, chipboard cover, and that, it was terrible. So I started completely again. So yeah, if you're using glue, don't use that. <laughs> That's just my little um, tip there, because yeah, it, it was just a complete waste of time. But when you're using um, fabric and you're sewing, that's something that can go in between like a couple of layers. And, um, sorry, I was just lining that up, seeing if it's okay. No, and I need a little bit snipped off of this as well. Yeah, it's something really cool in, um, in between fabrics. Or in between fabric and a light thin card that maybe you're stitching onto. It's I've used it loads of times and it's perfect. But yeah, it really wasn't with glue. And that was using this glue that glues anything. It really does seem to glue anything, don't it, the beacon glues. But yeah, not that. Not that. It was just such a waste of time. And where... Um, when once the fabric and that dried from um, 
using other glue, not this. This I'd go all around the edges with. But um yeah, it just had lifted and wasn't like a normal hard back book. Um oh, I've stuck that on the wrong side. <laughs> That's because I'm chatting and not concentrating. It's got to go on that side, isn't it? But luckily this is all gonna be covered up so you're not gonna see it. So, hang on, I'm confusing myself now. Yes, yeah, got to go on that side. And, yeah, we'll start again. <laughs> so, yeah, I was gutted. And the fabric had stuck to my um, spine. And I couldn't really get it off, even though it had come all loose underneath bits that I couldn't reach. And so I've had to get um, wet, wet up more grey board so that um, it's bendable because I really wanted a curved spine. And yeah, when that happened yesterday, I was in two minds. Oh, shall I just cut a bit and make a flat spine? But then that weren't what I'd envisaged the journal would look like. So. As long as you leave it overnight, it um it's fine. I just wetted it all up and went to bed so I can start working on that again today, which is cool. But yeah, I was um I just thought it would make the hardback feel really nice. But yeah. Yeah, see we definitely didn't need that thickness it just would have been way over the top so yeah we've got a little spine there and obviously that's just a flat fold there and these are sort of those self-adhesive ones so until i get them covered they will keep sticking to themselves but i think what i want to do i'll make the new flap and then we'll see um maybe leave it there and we'll come back and decorate this one in part two we'll see right so i want to make the flap and because we've got that little eighth or sixteenth whatever it is of an inch there i'm going to want that again on this flap so let's open it out so i'm not scoring the wrong place or that i'm not lining it up wrong Right, so I'm just seeing roughly where that line is. And then going one up from them. So that the actual thing has got its little bit. And then, right, working out how deep I want this lid to go. Lid? Flap. <laughs> Maybe coming down. Right, so I'm a little bit behind. Just to make sure it's stuck on well. And then we want our little one notch up. However much that does measure. I should look quarter eight. They are eight, seven inch. Okay like that so that will sit there that will be adhered to that and it'll come down maybe if it come down to there and then make some kind of shape going on right so uh, okay that bit can be used again somewhere else and I need to line it. I don't want too much bulk. So I've got this really thin paper that looks like old newspaper. That will sit there. So I don't think I need that um, scored. Because so I'll go the other side of the score line there. And it will stick like that. Right. Yep. That's, that's how I want it. And I'm just thinking... Right, 
I don't want it to come out looking odd shaped, but I don't want it exactly square. So I'm going to have to measure, which I don't normally do, but I will do because I don't want it wrong. Right, so just from the end, I'm coming into the very bottom. Right, so line it up. Right. I'm just lining it up flush with that and coming in, what should we say, half inch? Yeah, right. Now I'm going to do the same at this end. Right. And then I'm going to cut them off. So I'm going to come inside from that line and go up to the corner. This better work <laughs> the way that I want it to. So going from that corner to the inside of that line. And let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty even. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, and this bit, it's going to line the insides, the bit the right way up. And I can trim it using this as my guide. So, what I do want to make sure is that the flat, once it's on, that you don't see none of that. Yeah, it is wide enough at the bottom. That's all I needed to work out. Right. And I'll just ink all around this. Okay, so I just inked all around and I just mitered those edges. You're not going to see them. Right. And I want to line the flap up with my score lines so that they're not off. So that's where I'm going to put my first bit of glue on the top one. Now, on here, but then lining it up with my score lines. So, I'm um, gluing both um, creases and the flap at the back. And I'm going to line those up with my score lines there. And then just coming over, making sure that the flap is where I want it to be and glued to what I wanted it to be glued to. Right, yeah, that is how I wanted it because that's going to close, that's going to close and that crease is the same, or little spine is the same as my little hinge spine there. Right, so, now, let me get, oh, hang on, is it, yeah, it's the right way up. I was just double checking that it weren't round the wrong way. That's there. And so then this one that I'm going to line it with, all I need... Oh, is it deep enough? Right, I've got another piece of that. And if I go from my second crease, which is my little hinge, which when I inked, I didn't ink the second crease. So I'm just doing that now. I think I did that side, but not that side. Right. Okay. And then this one can go from there upwards. And it just comes in slightly. It's slightly narrower. So what I'm going to do, again, right, line that up with that second crease there. sure that I've got it exactly where I want it and then where's that pen gone I'll just do these roughly because I want to come in slightly from them 
So just so that I've got a little mark to go from. If it don't work out, we'll line it with something else. It's just, I'm just playing around. it will end up being covered up but yeah that goes in slightly I need a slightly better angle and it's going to have to have a bit chopped off the end as well so I'm going to take that end off first try and make sure it is straight And then I'm just slicing a little bit more off. May need a touch more, but I'd rather go slowly because I'm having it in slightly. Right. No, I'm happy with that. Mm. Am I? <laughs> yep, yep, I'm just going to wink around here and then we get that stuck down and like I said we've got loads of decorating to do yet so you probably won't see much of these bits of paper that I'm making the new flat with but you're going to see some so I wanted it to be right but yeah it's I, I find it easier just eyeballing you know just than measuring just seeing keep going back taking little bits off at a time and yeah seeing how we go okay so it's just up from my second crease which makes a nice little Face all around, let's see. Right. And that, oops, will sit like that. Open up, and we've got that side and that side. Oh, which will get these covered and start embellishing and that in our next video because I've kept you for a little while today so I think what I'll do is get prepared for next time by cutting the pieces that I want to cover all of this you know so that when we come back for part two um we're not here 10 million years thank you very much for watching i do appreciate you all so so much thank you for subscribing and just being here i'm starting to approach the 500 mark and i can't quite believe it like i've said many times this channel is like my baby it's like just something that i'm really really proud of you know that i've done all by myself after a few years of because don't get me wrong a few years ago I could do anything I was quite feisty I was like out there working doing like good things and that and then I got really ill and I thought for ages that I couldn't do nothing and that I didn't have nothing other than I knew I had my family and Jamie but I didn't have nothing that I could call mine that I, or a job that I was proud of anymore or anything like that and then I started this channel and it's grown and I do call you my Cockney Craft fam because it is like a little family here everyone's so caring so supportive of one another and yeah it's one of the things that I am most proud of so yeah thank you very much I'll be back very soon come back for part two Love yous. Bye for now. Stay safe and stay well. Bye.